All right, everybody, welcome back to the Paperless Movement podcast. I'm really excited to welcome Edward Metzger. For all of you who are in the Inner Circle membership, you will be able to watch the interview uh, inside the membership. And now, without further ado, let's dive into this. So, Edward, I just said Edward Metzger. Is that right? Yes, correct. Hi, Tom. Glad Hi. to be here. So it, it sounds very German. Yes, because I am from Germany. <laughs> ah, who would have <laughs> <laughs> thought that? Obviously, we talked about uh, this before the interview. So yeah, very interesting. You're from Hannover, so we could do the the podcast actually in German. But um, you're not in Germany right now, isn't it? Yeah, right now I am in Panama, so I'm traveling across the South America at the moment. Uh, not much traveling because yeah. of Corona, but <laughs> I'm enjoying the sun here. Well, that's nice. And for those who don't know Edward Metzger, he is the CEO of Noteplan and also the founder and actually the developer of Noteplan. Or oh, is that correct. wrong? It's correct. Okay, yes. so maybe you tell us more about you, why you started Noteplan and the vision behind that. I've started no plan in 2016. I was looking like many people um, for a task manager and a note taking app and everything, um, but couldn't find anything good. I mean, there were good apps, but they were only focused like only tasks or only calendar or only notes, but I needed some kind of mix of everything. So I abandoned my search and I started um, using a good old paper notebook which was a, like the Moleskin uh, calendar notebook. And there I had the, it, it's mainly a calendar, so, but you have like one page for one day. And then, but instead of writing down my meetings, because as a developer, I was still developer also at that time, um, I didn't have many meetings actually. So I was writing down my tasks in there. So what I wanted to achieve on, the, on this specific day. And then I thought, okay, if, I, if there are no apps which can do it like this, in this kind of bullet journaling style, um, I can make my own app. I just write a MVP kind of. Yeah. And um, and then I see if anybody else also needs it. And then I thought, okay, I could make an experiment, upload it to the app store and see what happens. So I translated this concept of one page per day into the software world. Mm -hmm. So this was back in 2016, you said? Yes. Okay, so, and what app store did you upload it to? I mean, was it directly for the iPad or did you start on the Mac version? Yeah, I started on Mac. Actually, I couldn't even, uh, I didn't even know how to program an app for iOS at mm. this time. Yeah. I had a Mac, but I was always using C++, uh, if anybody... <laughs> Uh, a developer's listening here. Um, so I, I even didn't, I never coded an app for iOS at this time, not, not a serious one at least. Um, so I started on the Mac App Store and that, that's also what I used most of the time. Okay, so this was Note Plan 1 then. So yes. how long did it exist until you started Note Plan 2? Um, maybe a year or so until I noticed so it was, uh, as I said, an MVP, a very quick version of it, just the core features, nothing else. You couldn't even write any notes which were not attached to a calendar date. So, but then the feedback was pouring in. So I did a little bit of marketing. I wrote to some bloggers and so on. And quickly people started to write me emails and very good, very constructive feedback as it is today even. And then I started to build new features into it. This was still every, uh, all a side project at this time. So I was doing like, a, uh, it was still like a hobby at this time. I didn't earn much money from it, but it was a lot of fun. And now we are at Node Plan 3 already. Yes, correct. So what was the but, trigger to make another, another version? Yeah, it took um, like uh, two iterations from starting with Node Plan 1, 2, and then 3. And in each iteration, I changed the user interface a lot. So mm -hmm. the first one, I have integrated um, a full uh, calendar picker and the project notes, which are not attached to a calendar, because I saw the need for like, you also want to manage your projects in a separate note, not always in your daily notes and so on. Um, and then the second version, the, the calendar, the monthly calendar was a very central point in the user interface. And I noticed slowly, 
actually this is not the central this is not the focus of the app the having a calendar I, I don't i don't want to make a calendar app i notice i am most of the time i'm working in the editor actually i'm creating mm -hmm. tasks i'm writing notes um, attached to this task and so on so this this is where i then switched from a note centric app to a more editor on um sorry from a calendar centric yeah. app to a note centric app in Cal uh, note plan three and this is also where I introduced folder system and everything which were um, highly requested features well that's very interesting so it was actually the ui that forced you to restart from scratch and what about all the users who were in note plan two what happened to their notes <laughs> so yeah, the notes are are compatible okay um, these are <laughs> some plain text markdown notes um, I've built it specifically <clears throat> like this, which, uh, so you can use it with any other app. So uh, in case no plan doesn't exist at, at some point in time, you're not lost and have no access anymore. You can still use it with any other app. But this is really great, yeah, um, having it in Markdown version. So like Obsidian or Rome Research or other tools uh, offer this as well. So especially Obsidian, you can open these files with any Markdown editor. Markdown editor. So is it possible with the with the uh, notes and note plan as well? Yes, you can even use text edit or whatever to okay. uh, edit them. And we have also specifically um, enabled that you can use Obsidian with note plan together, just in case. Oh, if maybe you, tell if you us more switch. about this. How do I <laughs> yeah, use this together? Um, so by default, <clears throat> note plan saved them as text files, the markdown files. Because in the initially, I thought if someone um, wants to edit them, they you could double click and edit them in text edit by default, which is not so easy with an MD text uh, um, file extension. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, <clears throat> uh, did you popular request? I have added the feature that you can change the note extension from TXT to MD, and then you just need to point your vault, your Obsidian vault, to the No Plan folder on your Mac. Well, that's great. So, but what would be the advantage to do this, to combine these two? So I could use either or. Oh, actually, let me uh, guess something. <laughs> If I use mainly note plan, which connects then to my calendar, so I, you know, I have the connection to my time, I can, on the other hand, open it up in Obsidian and I see the graphs there and see the interconnection between yeah. the different nodes. Yes, great. 100 it points. Thank some, you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's actually a great uh, use case. I have to make a note of this and look into this. Thank you. Yeah, and this is really something I really like if um, apps are very open-minded, I would say. Um, integration is key, I always say. When you look for tools, then I always recommend tools that are either... Um, Oh, they offer a lot of integration. So, for example, Todoist that integrates with a lot of tools and does one thing great, like ticking off boxes, all right? But I still can connect it with a calendar and things like that. And um, looking at other tools um, who don't have this, you limit the people to stay in one ecosystem. And Markdown is uh, certainly something that plays a big role there as well, like Obsidian and so on. And here we have a very good example how two tools can work together. So thank you very much to, to pointing this out. Very interesting. So, but talking about integration with the calendar, do you have a two-way synchronization with Google Calendar in NotePlan? Yes, NotePlan synchronizes with your iCloud accounts. <clears throat> so whatever you add to your Mac, um, there you have a, a preference called internet accounts and by default you just have the iCloud calendar but if you can add there also Google Outlook um, and other calendars Yahoo I don't know what all you can add I think you can also add like the issue I saw so far was that a two-way a real two-way synchronization only works with Google Calendar so in this case it works with Outlook and everything else because it is using the iCloud as an uh, medium between both? Yes. Yeah, Ooh. like if you add a new calendar to your um, Apple calendar, mm -hmm. you can add there too, Google and everything else. So whatever you see in your Apple calendar is also available in no plan, basically. Okay, so you have an Apple calendar and that I can visualize then on my Outlook or Google calendar. 
but it doesn't actually create um, events in these calendars. So for example, you can create, you can also create events. Uh, if you on the right hand side, it says a timeline, you click in no plan. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Uh, okay. I have the calendar integrated there and I can. Okay, now I got it. I was all in this two way synchronization between tasks and to do list ah, and yeah. the and the event creation. But we have a different approach here, isn't it? So it's not the task that we're syncing. So, yes, so, um, this is then another thing that we have the task inside note plan and they become events in the calendar. No, it's these are two things. You can keep your events as events, like um, like this uh, call here, or you can and you can have the tasks in the middle in the editor. So I kept it separate. Uh, there are feature requests to synchronize tasks and events, but um, the problem I see, at least from how I use it and other people use it, the the like the hardcore users, they mm -hmm. have like twenty tasks in their uh, main page on the daily page. And then it's hard to track also if a, if a task changes or you check off a task and everything, and it needs to be continuously updated with the calendar, then why do you need it in two apps? Um, so I thought you can have like different information in the calendar, uh, like really things where which you need to do at a certain time. Mm -hmm. And the tasks are like for the day and they're not specifically for a certain time, but there's one uh, action uh, extra connection you can do is you can time block in no plan you can say uh, buy milk at 5 p.m and then it will also be displayed at the right side on in the timeline but at this point it, this is not synchronized with the calendar but this is a point where i plan to add a feature to synchronize it okay so that really uh, sounds like the missing link here because um yeah i see it from the perspective that Every task needs time, so it needs to be blocked. Mm. So it sounds like that the solution in Note Plan right now is that I time block uh, a certain part in which I work on ten different tasks inside Note Plan. So that sounds like a solution. Um, maybe another workaround would be if you could assign certain tasks to one of or to one event. Is this possible? Not yet, but this is also planned. <laughs> yeah, okay. So if you time block anyway, then you could assign these 10 tasks to one time block. And then that, because I agree, yeah. I agree. I, this is the reason why I have some issues syncing it with to do with the Google Calendar because it becomes too many tasks. And then mm -hmm. I work from my Google Calendar as my task manager, more or less, dragging mm -hmm. around these. Or if it is too many tasks, you know, I'm losing time managing my tasks on the calendar. So I rather do them even if it if the order changes but having something like this like a in between thing that i block out my time for a stack of tasks that would be something very interesting i have to say i can give you a, a quick example how i use <clears throat> no plan specifically of course that's the reason so, why we so, have the interview <laughs> yeah. so for example um i mean i um i don't block out specific time like for coding but usually i do this like in the afternoon um maybe I, I like unconsciously I do it from 1 p.m. to I don't know 4 p.m. or something one session um, but in no plan what I write down is not just task coding obviously I write down all the details I actually want to do every function I want to add the bugs I want to fix so it's like a list of 20 items yeah. which I carry forward partially depending how many I have completed to the next day Mm -hmm. So where a time blocking can work here very well is if I say, okay, a develop, a development could be one time block and these tasks, uh, the details could be below that and they are hidden from the calendar, yeah. but they're visible in no plan. Yeah, that, that sounds very um, reasonable. Uh, I just think about... Yeah, this is a real comp uh, different approach and I really like this approach because... If I think about ClickUp, for example, I have something like this as well. I create a task that might sync with my Google Calendar, also two-way, and the details will live inside the task. So I mm. could, you know, make a checklist in there. And what you just mentioned, these are the things yeah. that I want to do in this, or add subtask and go wide there this way. But it would be the same approach, isn't it? Because the major task would mm. be the event on my calendar. 
and I click on the calendar, it opens up the task and I have all the details there. So uh, it's not that far away. <laughs> That's correct. So yeah. there's already a solution. Yeah. Um, so you said, yeah, obviously you're the developer. Um, so you write down all the codes and things like that and because the, the advantage of using node plan is that you're actually also creating nodes isn't it we were talking about time management and task management but um, people who follow me or are part of my inner circle they know about the icor framework input control output refine the different parts of a productivity mm -hmm. system and uh, we talked here about control uh, no we didn't talk about control we talked about output which is the task mm -hmm. and time management Now let's talk mm. about control, which would be knowledge management. So is it worth writing something into task and we don't lose it? So that would be another advantage, isn't it? So um, I use Noteplan also for knowledge management. Yeah. Um, specifically, I use, so personally, I use the Zettel custom method. Mm -hmm. And um, often for problems which are not so easy, to, so not for uh, single tasks, I've written down in a list. Um, I don't need a, like a note for this, but if it's more complicated, um, like figuring out how a feature should supposed to work, how the user interface should look like, if I don't know it right away and can write it down in one sentence, then I need to create <clears throat> multiple interconnected notes. And usually I read some feature requests or an email from a user. And if there's like a new information I didn't consider yet, like a new idea um, or a new angle from which you can view this problem, which the feature is supposed to solve, then I add a new node and connect it to another uh, node, which is already in my system. So mm -hmm. once I, I think, okay, I'm ready to start working on it, I can uh, uh, I search for one node, which is referring to this problem. And then I already have all the links at the top and can navigate forth and back and find all the aspects I need to know. Well, that's very, I want to dig into this a bit deeper. So just for the listeners, um, if you're not aware what Settle Custom Method is, there's a productivity guide also for my Inner Circle members available if you want to dive into how to apply to your system. Um, so interesting that Edward is using this as well. And we heard more and more about Settle Custom Method once the backlinks started with Rome Research and so on. Yeah. I think there's a new hype then born And then Notion added the backlinks and obviously Obsidian um, is big with this. So now you're telling me we have something like this in, Not in NotePlan as well. So at least mentions of other nodes. So I can refer to other nodes. Yes, also the backlinks are displayed at the top. Okay, great. Node. So now we talked about NotePlan and Obsidian that we can use it in combination. So do they still live the backlinks inside Obsidian? If they also work there? Yeah. Or yeah. Yes, if you keep the uh, file name and the note title the same, then okay. they would be uh, also working there. <sighs> Interesting. <laughs> Because yeah, we as humanity can, can just leverage from such things if we mm. think big and see you know leverage the other tools with each other so this sounds really great so um my initial review about note plan was the first impression review but the things that you just mentioned here just lets me get back and have a second look i guess <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. i saw the first review was i think on ipad yeah it was it was on ipad and then on an and on mac ah mac yeah okay mac too, yeah. so um on, on i I actually had to buy the premium access, I think. And yeah, maybe you can tell us a bit more about the pricing structure. I think I remember something that um, I had to buy it in order to use it. Yeah, I'm using uh, the App Store subscription system. Yeah. And there uh, you can subscribe for like uh, one year. Mm. The payment is one year, but and the, it's uh, $60 then annually or if you divide it by uh, for a month is $5. Yeah, yeah. And um, so by using the Apple system, you get, I can set up that you get one month in this case uh, of a free trial. And if you cancel before you don't, you're not charged or anything. So okay. So people can test it out for free. That's right. the trial is built into the subscription. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay, good. So for the people out there, if you want to check it out, download it and test it. And um, this is always good, you know, if a tool is actually good, 
I like the trial version. And what I don't like is people complaining about that they have to pay something for an application. I don't get it. At all. If they say, I have something like this for free. Yeah, maybe, but you pay with something else. Maybe your data or something like that. So there's always, nothing is for free. And if you want to have these things developed in the future, then <laughs> you uh, we should pay something. So yeah, no hard feelings there from my end, obviously. Um, so this is very interesting, actually. So do you... Uh, do you have any f future plans for Note Plan 4? <laughs> As you're already in a role there. <clears throat> yeah, slowly um, some uh, user interface improvements are emerging. But um, anyways, I'm like adding every two, three weeks a new feature. Uh, maybe every three weeks a new release about this time. And this is mostly a new major feature which comes in. So. Um, and since there is a subscription, I'm not thinking anymore in major versions because um, just to give you a, a quick view into how the business models work usually. Sure, we so have, you have a lot of business people in the community here. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you have a one-time payment product, then you rely on this one major upgrade once a year. And this is where you increase the version, you save up all the features and just release bug fixes in between a yeah. little bit. Um, and then you need this one big launch with marketing and everything. And this is something I don't really like. And I also don't think it's good for users. So I switched to the subscription model where I release a new feature right away when it's available. Um, and there, there are many things planned for it. I mean, uh, I'm getting so many feature requests. Um, I need to prioritize very hard <laughs> and choose which one I should do next. So one exciting thing which is coming next is a plugin framework. So in the, one of the last releases, we um, or I made the theme customization possible. So you could even add your own markdown, uh, regular expressions, and then style your uh, notes how you want. Like if you want strike through, it's not available. You can edit yourself, or you can download it from another user already uh, pre-made. Okay. And I want. I want to take this customization further. So NoPlan has a command bar. And in the next version, you can also write your own uh, simplified JavaScript plugins for this. So this is not super complicated. JavaScript is actually very simple. You access, you can say, NoPlan, give me all the nodes I have in, an, in a list. And then I filter it somehow. And then I do something with this node, write to it, um, change something, add a to-do or something. So this is one of the next improvements because there are many technical people who uh, write already many plugins, but they're like accessing only the markdown files and I want to give them some better tools. But that sounds really interesting. So you're going more in the coder direction where they also offer these packs and that you can, you know, some simplified coding uh, that you apply there and things like this. Um, uh, that sounds really exciting. So will it become more complicated on the front end for the casual user? Or is it really the know. people you're tar targeting there? Maybe it is the best tool for coders. Uh, it, it won't, uh, the, the user interface won't get more complicated through this. Uh, I made it specifically through the command bar. Many apps have this kind of um, quick list and command bar yeah. or spotlight similar thing. Um, what I'm adding there is just a way to access commands. Like if you want to move uh, a node to another folder and you don't want to use your mouse cursor, you can, for example, use then the command bar and access a plugin to move it. Or if you want to add a task to a specific node, you could do this also from the command bar using a plugin. Or other s simple examples are if uh, um, a coder could also, or a plugin developer could write a plugin which can uh, pull the weather data from some website or any other data which you can pull from the internet could be added to your daily notes, for example, like this. Well, that sounds really interesting. So are you planning to have a marketplace or something like that where people can share the, the plugins or how do you actually keep control about security when people create these plugins? I think it's a big challenge, isn't it? Letting people yeah, so into I, the code. At first I want to give the option in general yeah. uh, to do these kind of things. And um, people will share it on, on the different forums we have. 
Um, and then later I will add more and more as, as uh, I will check how popular these things are and then add more things around it, security measures and a gallery and all these things. Well, you can then finally implement the stuff into the actual application, isn't it? So you have yeah. an idea generator right there. I see what <laughs> you did there. <laughs> no, it's, it's great. Uh, I think the community is really powerful in, in any, especially in, uh, in any SaaS. And yeah. um, you get raving fans if they can be part of your growth with the, with the tool. So this is really interesting. Um, Yeah, and I guess you will have a warning there. If you impl uh, install any third-party plugins, then it's on a, your own risk. Um, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, but this is uh, this is really interesting news. Okay, so, yeah. and when do you plan this? This year already? Yeah, this is the next the, update. So maybe in two, three weeks. Oh, so close. Well, then, people, you have <laughs> to expect an update video there on YouTube. I have to check this out. So yeah. you have already beta testers in there, and they built already plugins and all this. Yes, we have a Discord community, actually, which mm. is, which is uh, I kept it very small at the beginning and cherry-picked a few very active users mm. so we can, like, um, build the rules and build out the Discord. And there we have, uh, like, an alpha team of... Uh, plugin developers uh -huh. <laughs> which which are very interested and currently i'm developing with with them um the exact features which it needs and which functions need to be there yeah so it's um, in, in beta right now okay so this sounds great so you are on your own still or do you have a team i'm uh, on my own uh, but occasionally i work with freelancers to help yeah. me out and things where I'm really bad, like uh, marketing, <laughs> landing page, <laughs> copy or something. So yeah. this is not my expertise. This Or I can design. This is where I hire freelancers every yeah. now and then. Yeah, well, that's that's the life of an entrepreneur, isn't it? We are wearing a lot of hats. I hate writing. I can confess <laughs> this as well. I hate it, but I like talking. So why not hire somebody who loves writing and listening and I can talk and they write? This is how it works in a paperless movement. This is great. Yeah, and then in proper English. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> you know, uh, this is another reason why I'm not writing. Yeah. I mean, I drafting everything out, but the proper English is very important to me that the quality yeah. is right. So, yeah, yeah this problem. is, uh, yeah, I think we are all wearing a lot of hats. Okay. So um, is there anything you else you want to share with the community? Do you um, plan to go to Windows? No. no. <laughs> um, <laughs> This laughing. You should have seen his face. <laughs> no Windows. <laughs> <laughs> so it is not an Apple-only community, guys, here. So I people come back to me and say, ah, you only talk about Apple and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, my, my Windows desktop is still standing here for gaming because it's the <laughs> best performance for money when it comes to gaming, obviously. But, um, and, you know, a lot, a lot of people run on uh, Windows, Microsoft 365 and things like that. So, so many companies rely on this. And this is a real issue with the cross-compatibility. So I was always looking for tools who actually work cross-platform until I'm now completely sucked into the Apple universe. Everything just clicks and works. And this makes you really wonder, do I really need it then on Windows? I'm already happy if I have a web access. And this is usually, I would say, the workaround. Uh, is this anything you will offer in the future? Yes, this is uh, planned and also um, currently in the works. So uh -huh. I have a, a freelancer who is helping me build this. And specifically, um, this will rely on still on Apple's uh, database called CloudKit. Mm -hmm. um, so you can reuse the notes you have saved on your Mac and on iOS devices, and you, you will have them right away available on the web uh, interface just by logging in with your Apple ID. Okay. And this is also targeted for people um, who have like privately, um, uh, they have an iPhone, iPad, and Mac at home, but then the, the employer forces them to use a Windows PC. Exactly. <laughs> this is exactly the Or, thing, yeah. 
Yeah, or the, you have to use two different Apple IDs. This is also a very common problem. Okay. You have a work Apple ID and you have a private Apple ID on your iPhone, for example. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have to sync, obviously, because you need it's all uh, bound to one Apple yeah. ID synchronization. So this is like the second use case for this. Well, this is another interesting thing. Good that I ask. And uh, another thing is, what about, because you just mentioned it is all bound to one Apple ID, what about collaboration? Uh, this is also planned. It's actually um, uh, already possible as an alpha version on the iOS app. Okay. There have, it's a bit hidden. Uh, you can share a note with another person because this is actually built into CloudKit, uh, yeah. Apple's database. And the sharing functionality, you can have a shared database where you share your notes and you can even have a public database. And um, so uh, one path is to have uh, like a space where you share your notes with uh, colleagues and other people. And a uh, third option, which is actually not e so much extra work for me, is to uh, publish your notes also to the web, for example, because mm -hmm. um, having the public database, which Apple provides, um, an app could access the node render the markdown into nice and then display it with so you don't have to export a pdf send yeah. it through email you can just send a link well that's what i hate anyway you don't uh, oh god <laughs> don't export <laughs> your stuff and send it via email and then three different copies and then you get it back yeah. marked down or annotated and then you okay this is this is exactly what i'm helping in the paperless movement and in a circle to not do these things or print off your emails and then start annotating. That's one <laughs> of the other fun things that I always hear. Um, uh, but this just pointed me into another direction. So I just recently published a video about Apple Notes and why I think it is a great app for free on the iPad. And the thing is why I think it is so great because people said, so you're using only Apple Notes then. And I think this is a misconception. There are The, the tools for different purposes. And Apple Notes is just my sketch tool. So I had the Remarkable uh, in order to jot something down very quickly and it will stay there in my face. And actually the iPad offers this as well with a tap on your iPad, you can open up the app and then you can write. And they don't allow the developers to take this away, isn't it? It would be awesome to have the tap with the Apple Pencil and wow. it opens another app. So they want to keep this. But why <laughs> do I mention this now? It is because you mentioned the sharing is built in. And this is not very long ago. It, it was iPad OS 14, I think, where they started sharing the notes. Or was it earlier already? I don't know. But mm. um, yeah, this started the collaboration on Apple Notes. And it seems like the mm. new features you always see first on Apple Notes, mm. uh, where they you know play around with what they just have in the new SDK. And then... I see new tools popping up like craft app and so on. And if you have some knowledge about uh, how to develop the stuff or what is in the back, and it's really interesting how people leverage the different things and combine things in a new way. And um, that this web sharing as well, um, this is all thanks to Apple, isn't it? That they provide the framework that you can do this. And on the other hand, you have to rely on what they provide to you, isn't it? Now you could use uh, your own framework. Mm. Um, you can you can build your own database and everything, but I didn't do this specifically because then I I'm responsible to maintain it. Yeah. And oh, also for users it's not good because then uh, even if the company uh, is like um, sold out to another company and then they shut down the database, it's not very nice. Mm. Um, like it happened uh, with very big apps a few times already. So that's why I kept everything at Apple. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, this is not, not very likely that something happens there. So you will always keep your database. And yes, uh, Apple um, has added these kind of features where you can access the node from the web or the data um, only if you share it with, a public, yeah. um, uh, with the public or share it with other um, Apple ID users. Well, that, that's really great. So um, I think there's not much more to add for today, uh, but we certainly need to have another call uh, or another interview later this year once you published all the things that you promised on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Many people listened. You have to deliver now. <laughs> well, I sure you will. And um, I also agree with the subscription model. 
um, if people buy apps like Notability, GoodNotes, NodeShelf, many people complain already paying $10 for the app. I mean, it is a one-time payment, $10. And how much mm. does Apple actually keep? You know that, isn't it? How much is it? 50%, 40% or even or more? Uh, if you said on the App Store. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for small businesses, it's um, they keep 15%. 15, for big, okay. Yeah. For, for big businesses making more than a million revenue, mm -hmm. it's 30%. So 30%. It was 30% uh, before 2021, actually. So it's very new that it's 15 now. Okay, so let's consider that Notability, for example, has a million. So they lose from the $10, they lose already $3 only to Apple. Yeah, so people defensive. people don't see this, you know, and <laughs> they're not relaunching this app. So I don't know how they can survive, to be honest, uh, just mm -hmm. by growing. And we have a limited number of people on the world. Yeah. So thank you very much, Edward, uh, that you've been on the show. Um, as I said, people check out NotePlan, um, at least in a free trial and see if it is for you. I really like the concept of combining task and time management, and especially that we also building up a knowledge management or knowledge base this way. So this really connecting the dots here. Thanks for being on the show and we talk again, right? Yes, sure. <laughs> Thanks for having me on the show. All right.